Hey friends, let's get moving. Come on down to the ground to start and we're gonna be in all fours. Spread your fingers wide so that you can see the color of your mat between each finger. And make sure that you rotate your elbow creases forward in the same direction as your fingertips. And just start to sway a little bit from side to side, waking up your hands and wrists. You can circle around here as well. Okay, and I know that everybody's wrists and hands are different. So if that short period of time that we've just spent on our hands is enough for your wrists, if they are already starting to feel tired, that's fine. Go ahead and come up onto your fists so that you can stick with me here. Okay, so from here, Go ahead and make sure that your um, shoulder blades are moving away from one another. So we'll give a press through your hands. And as you do that, elbow creases still point forward, okay? So shoulder blades are moving apart. Maybe you feel a little stretch in the upper back if you're like me. Keep your neck nice and soft. And then make sure that your pelvis is in neutral. So you can kind of toggle between two extremes until you find neutral. So one extreme would be um, lifting your tailbone towards the ceiling. One would be tucking your tailbone under. Uh, and so kind of find, find the happy medium there. Okay. Now from here, go ahead and pick your right hand up away from the ground and try not to let anything else move. Don't displace the rest of your body and feel how your core um, abdominals have to wake up to stabilize you. Go ahead and put that right hand down and then lift the left hand up. Same thing, feel how your core is starting to wake up. Okay, you can go from side to side. And if you wanna give a little tap to the opposite shoulder, you can do that as well. So you might keep working here. Um, another option is to float your knees up off the ground. Okay, so if you're starting with your knees up off the ground, you're gonna, before you go to tap a hand to a shoulder, you wanna try to pick a hand up off the ground first. So this one is a little bit, a little bit jerkier, <laughs> a little bit more of a challenge, and maybe you can tap the opposite shoulder. Again, trying not to really displace the rest of your body, which I'm not doing a good job of modeling. <laughs> One more each way. Great, and if your knees are up, go ahead and set your knees back down. Now from here, step your right foot towards the front of your mat and go ahead and bring your hands to your hips and lift your torso up. Okay, scoop your tailbone under here, hopefully turning on some stretch sensation on the front of the left thigh and then take your pelvis forward any amount more. Ribs are nestled down. Take a nice breath. Great job. Shift your hips back and step your right foot back and your left foot forward. Same thing here, tuck the tailbone under. So hopefully that turns on a stretch sensation on the front of the right quad, the front of the right hip. And then we're gonna lunge forward, send the pelvis forward any amount. Now, if you start to feel your pelvis coming untucked, back yourself up. Okay, keep that pelvis tucked under for this right now. Make sure your ribs are low. Nice deep breath. Great job. Shift your pelvis back, come back to your knees. And now we're gonna put our elbows on the ground a little bit forward of your, of your shoulders, okay? So you can try touching the uh, tops of your shoulders with your hands if you want, or you can just leave your, your hands down. I think that's a little bit harder, um, but your body might be different. So I'm gonna press my elbows into the ground so I again get that feeling of spread in between my shoulder blades. And then I'm gonna lean back. I'm gonna reach my hips back. 
say hello to your triceps. You might want to tuck your head like I'm doing. Now, the tendency here might be to let your rib cage kind of um, untuck towards the ground, but instead, I'd like for you to try hugging your low ribs up towards the ceiling and then just setting your whole body back to really try to unlock the, um, the, the arms and the chest from one another a little bit to kind of differentiate those two movements. One more breath here. Okay, lean yourself forward. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the forearms on the ground and the palms on the ground now. Scooch your knees back so that your knees are further behind your hips. You're kind of in a forearm plank here, okay? Now, you're gonna keep your knee, your right knee on the ground, but you're gonna try to tap your toe towards the ground on the outside of your mat, on that right side, okay? And then bring your leg back in, just like normal. So then the left leg is gonna come up and you're gonna try to release the left foot towards the ground. So it might not go, or you might have to turn your pelvis to get it to go. And I think that there's value in um, both of those movements. So maybe you try keeping your pelvis locked in and just trying to let your thigh bone rotate. So when I do that, when I just let my thigh bone rotate and I don't move my pelvis, um, my leg doesn't go out very far at all. But if I want to get my foot to the ground, I have to rotate my pelvis. And then that does other things for my body. That does other good things for my body, just like um, if I kept my pelvis stable. So it's not one is better than the other. Um, it's just kind of cool to pay attention to these moves. One more each way. We started on the right side, so we're gonna finish on the left. That was probably two more, and you might be cussing at me. Sorry. So go ahead and scooch your knees in and come back up to all fours for a moment. Curl your toes under and shift your hips back towards your toes, or back towards your heels, I should say. Um, so from here, you might feel some stretch in your toes or in the soles of your feet. And now let's go ahead and press the toes into the ground, okay? Depending on the mobility of your feet and the shape of your feet, um, your pinky toes may or may not really be participating in this action. Um, just do what, whatever you can. Whichever toes are making contact with the ground, those are the toes that you should be trying to press back into the ground. For three, two, and one. Okay, shift forward again, and then put the tops of the feet on the ground and just kind of flop the tops of your feet on the ground. <sighs> I don't know why, but I just think that feels so good. <laughs> okay, so from here, you're gonna go ahead and be in your, in your stable table, pushing through your hands so your shoulder blades spread a bit. You're gonna pick up your right knee and you're gonna take your right knee out to the side like you're trying to get it towards your right shoulder. Then take your knee back out wide, tracing a big circle. And this is where you're gonna straighten your leg and reach your right toes to the ground on the outside of the left leg. And then you're gonna slide back any amount, maybe waking up some stretch in the left outer hip. You're gonna come back upright and bring your right knee back to starting, okay? We're gonna alternate sides here. So stable table, left knee lifts, and I'm gonna take my left knee out to the side through that fire hydrant position, trying to get my left knee up towards my left shoulder. And then I'm gonna take my knee back through that fire hydrant position. And when my knee starts to point behind me, that's when I'm gonna straighten my leg and I'm gonna reach my left toes to the ground on the other side, on my right side. And then I'm gonna slide back into a, a stretch for my hip. And then I'm gonna come back upright 
and return to the starting position. So let's do that three more times on each side. Okay, stable table, right knee lifts, through the fire hydrant, we're gonna bring the right knee towards the right elbow, back through the fire hydrant, knee points back, leg straightens, right toes tap the ground or the prop basket, and then you slide back any amount into a hip stretch, coming back up to all fours to switch to the left side, left leg lifts, moving through that fire hydrant pose to knee to shoulder, back through fire hydrant, so the left knee points back, straighten the leg, put the left toes on the ground, and slide back any amount, making sure that however far you slide back, your knee is happy with that decision. Right, uh, right knee lifts, knee to, el uh, knee to shoulder, I should say. Point your right knee back, extend your leg, I'm having trouble with that basket there. I should have moved that. Slide back, coming back to all fours. Left leg, remember stable table, press through your hands, or if you're using your fists, press through your fists. Sliding back any amount. This is our last one for each side. Press through the hands, stable table, soft neck, right knee to right shoulder. Ooh, it kind of, it kind of got there that time. Uh, and then coming back into this kind of wonky hip stretch situation, coming back to all fours, left knee lifts, moving through the fire hydrant up towards the shoulder and pointing the knee back, straightening the leg, left toes find the ground, lean back into that stretch and come back to all fours. Great job. Curl your toes under, and if you can, flip up onto the balls of your feet. So you might be, depending on the range of motion in your knees or hips, you might be more up here. If you have more range of motion in your knees, hips, and ankles, you might be more into a squat. Wherever you are, that's fine. Uh, and then let's all find our way into kind of a, a flat back, flat back, your back's not actually flat, but we're gonna pretend situation. So um, you wanna bring your spine parallel to the ground. You might need to bend your knees to get there, okay? Bring your hands to your hips. Make sure that your rib cage, your low ribs are snuggled in. And then from here, you're gonna reach your right arm forward and reach your left arm forward, going back and forth, alternating from side to side. So if this feels like too much for your low back, one thing you can do is have your hand on a chair or on a step stool or some blocks, whatever, and you can support yourself with that hand while the other hand is moving. One more each way, right, left. Okay, hands to hips. Now we're gonna bend through or press through the legs to stand up. Okay, let's get our waist moving a little bit. Um, so put your feet hip distance apart with your toes pointing straight ahead. And then you're gonna take your arms out with your palms facing up. So you're gonna imagine that you got a pizza box <laughs> in each hand, okay? Um, keep your rib cage snuggled in and just take those pizza boxes behind you any amount, okay? It might just be a scotch behind you and that's fine. Now, you're gonna reach that right pizza box over to the right saying, uh, delivery, <laughs> and then come back to the center and reach through the left hand, deliver that pizza, and come back to center. So what we're not doing is this, because then the pizza would slide off onto the ground. So we're just taking the rib cage to slide from side to side to serve those pizzas, okay? and just keep serving. Notice if you can um, reach further through one side than the other. Now I just want pizza. <laughs> okay, lean over to the right, serve to the right and hold here. Take a deep breath in. 
Okay, come back to center, serve to the left. These pizzas are getting heavy, <laughs> these invisible pizzas. Take another breath in. Good job, and come back up to the middle. Drop those pizzas, circle out your shoulders. Okay, so from here, take your feet wider apart, wider than your hips, and turn your toes out wider than your ankles. Okay, so we're gonna bend down into the knees into a squat, into a wide squat position, and then put the backs of your hands against the insides of your knees. Drop your ribs, okay? And then you're just gonna slide your right hand down the inside of your right leg any amount, and then come back to center. And same thing on the left side. Slide down the inside of the left leg any amount and come back up to center. Still freeing up the waist, but we're doing it while waking up through the legs and the hips and the inner thighs and the glutes, <laughs> all the things. Okay. Go over to the left one more time and then come back to center. Stand up, straighten those legs, shake it out, <laughs> shake it out. So turn your toes to face forward again, but you still have this wide stance and bring your hands to your hips so that you can feel the muscles on the outside of your pelvis, okay? Um, and so you're gonna drop your left hip towards the ground and then drop your right hip towards the ground. And you're gonna go side to side, okay? Trying to just keep the rib cage where it is and the spine where it is, but just waking up these outer hips, okay? Dip and dip and for three, two, and one. Now come back to center, turn your toes back out, come back down into that wide squat. Okay, so from here, bring the hands to the um, insides of the knees again, and this time we're gonna slide over to the right, any amount, and then you're gonna take your left arm up towards the ceiling. Keep your hips low, okay? Keep your hips low, soft shoulders, soft neck, soft jaw, breathe. Relax your tongue as you breathe. Great, on your next exhale, bring your torso back upright. If you straightened your legs, you did it too early, now you can do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm being mean. Point your toes forward again, and we're gonna come back to those hip dips, okay? Dip your hips from side two, side, for three, two, and one. Okay, turn your toes back out. We gotta do the other side. Bend your knees, bring your hands to the insides of your knees, slide down to the left, and then lift your right arm up. Keep your hips low, breathe. <sighs> Notice if your shoulders are creeping up towards your ears, make some space. Relax your tongue. And take another deep breath in, and then on your next exhale, keep your knees bent, but bring your torso up. Then straighten your legs. Point your toes forward again. Last set of hip dips from side to side. Getting sassy. <laughs> These are your sassy hips. <sighs> I, you might not have known that you had sassy hips, but if you didn't know, now you know. Okay, I'm done with my bad jokes. <laughs> Go ahead and come back to center. Heel toe your feet back in, step together, and let's turn so that we're in a line with the long end of our mat, facing the long end of the mat. Okay, and now we're gonna keep the feet hip distance apart, okay? Uh, toes pointing straight ahead, 
And what you're gonna do now is shift your hips over to the left, okay? So it looks like this. And then you're gonna take the top rim of the left side of your pelvis and move it down towards the ground. And that's gonna wake up this outer hip muscle that should already be kind of groggy and awake from our hip dips, okay? And as you reach that outer hip down towards the ground, you're gonna feel this right leg get a little bit lighter, okay? So we're gonna float the right foot up off the ground. And then from here, we're gonna step the right foot straight back, coming into a lunge position. Okay, now bend your back knee a little bit, tuck your pelvis under. Hey, we've been here before. Drop your low ribs. Before though, we were just in a low lunge position. Now, shoot your arms up in the air without shooting your ribs up, okay? Just your arms. Left hand's gonna grab hold of right wrist and we're gonna lean towards the right, any amount. Great job, come back up to center. Go ahead and straighten your legs, lower your arms, step back up to the front, both feet on the ground. Okay, now shift your hips to the right. Same thing on this side. Find the top rim of the right side of the pelvis and move it down towards the ground. And as you do that, that hip dip, outer hip muscle is gonna start to fire up. The left foot's gonna get a little lighter on the ground. And then we're gonna just reach the left hip or the left foot straight back, coming into another lunge position here. The hip, uh, the hip points are shining straight ahead, okay? Bend your back knee, so you're giving some slack, and then tuck your tailbone under. Shoot your arms up while the ribs stay down. Right hand catches the left wrist, and we're gonna lean over to the right. Any amount, take some nice deep breaths. Great, come back upright, straighten your legs, Lower your arms and step back together. Take a full breath in and out. <sighs> okay, we're gonna put a, full, a, a few things together. A full few things together. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and shift your hips over to the left. Move the top of that uh, left side of the pelvis down, okay? So you're balancing now on your left leg. Now you're gonna take your right knee up and out to the side and around back, making as big of a circle as you can. And then that right foot is gonna reach back into kind of a standing, you remember when we did this, but we were on the ground, um, and you're gonna bend into a curtsy, okay? So both knees are bent. Keep reaching this outer left hip down as you circle back to our standing position, okay? So let's do the other side, shift to the right, um, right side of the pelvis moves down towards the ground to float the left leg up. Bring your knee up, big wide hip circle here. Take your leg back behind you, coming into a curtsy, curtsy squat position. But I really want you to keep trying to move this outer right hip down towards the ground, okay? And then to reverse, straighten the legs, and retrace that range of motion with your knee. So just like we did when we were on all fours, um, we're gonna do three more on each side. So here we go. Shift to the left, left hip down, right foot up. Circle the knee, curtsy squat. Both knees bend and this outer left hip is super duper reaching down towards the ground, super duper firing up out there. And then retrace that range of motion with the knee to come back to standing. Hips shift to the right, pelvic list, waking up that outer hip, circling the left knee, back, woo, back behind you, coming into that curtsy squat, outer right hip moving down strongly, retrace, having trouble on that side, come back to stand, two more each way, over to the left, balancing on the left foot, Right knee circles, curtsy squat, retrace, and stand. 
ships, ships hip to the left or to the right, <laughs> hips shift to the right. I am losing it. Circle back into your curtsy squat, really wrapping that right outer hip under. I'm not gonna talk when I do that side next time so that I can focus on balancing. This is the last set here. Last set. Coming back up. Last one on the right side and I'm gonna shh so I can focus and not fall over. Darn it, <laughs> I'm gonna try again. There we go. Okay, woo, <sighs> that was tough. I'm right there with you. <laughs> okay, let's bring it down to the ground. We're gonna try to lower down to the ground without using our hands, but if you feel like you're just gonna crash, then please do use your hands to support you. Um, there's lots of ways to get down. You can get down through a lunge, you can get down through a squat, um, you know, so just play around and see. I'm going to come down through crisscross. Okay, straighten your legs, move your mic pack over to the side, adjust your wardrobe. Okay, we're going down, we're going down to the back. So extend your arms and we're gonna start by tucking the tailbone under, you're gonna imagine that your tailbone is a spade digging up some ground. So dig up the earth there with your tailbone and keep reaching your tailbone towards the ceiling as you start to slowly roll down towards the ground, one vertebra at a time, trying to segment through the spine. Keep your chin tucked like you're holding a grapefruit between your chin and your chest until you get all the way down and then you can relax. And again, if you need to adjust your wardrobe one more time, go for it. So from here, go ahead and cross your um, right thigh over your left, like you're wearing a skirt, and then take your legs and drop them over to the left, any amount. I like to rest my hands on my rib cage here because it's nice to feel my breath. Okay, bring your legs back up through the middle. Uncross, put both feet on the ground. And then cross the other way. Left thigh over the right thigh and drop your knees any amount to the right. Another thing, another reason why I like to keep my hands here on my rib cage is because it helps me to realize when I've stopped when my spine has stopped rotating and when my spine has started bending to get into this twisting shape. So I've actually like gone past rotation. I've, my spine has rotated all that it could and then it bent into kind of a back bend a little bit to get me the rest of the way here. So while I'm here, I'm gonna think about um, breathing into my back breathing fullness into my back to help my rib cage reach the ground take, to take out some of that bend in the spine. Okay, bring your legs back up to center. Uncross both feet on the ground. And then from here, we're gonna do five bridges. So take a breath in. As you exhale, squeeze your glutes and lift your hips up towards the ceiling any amount. Inhale, slowly set your hips down. Exhale. Inhale, slow release. Exhale. Inhale, slow release down. Take your time. Exhale to lift. Inhale, slow release down. 
This is our last one coming up here, number five. Exhale, lift. Inhale, slow release down. And when your pelvis reaches the ground, go ahead and bring the soles of your feet together and your knees apart. We're gonna hang out here in this restful stretch. If you feel like um, you would like a pillow under your head or a blanket under your head, go ahead and get cozy. And again, rest your hands on your abdomen so that you can feel your breath. Go ahead and close your eyes. And we're just gonna count backwards silently to ourselves from the number 10. Starting at 10, each exhale, you're gonna count back a number. Each exhale is an opportunity to release tension and stress. The closer you get to zero, the more relaxed you feel. And then when you get to zero, enjoy this relaxed pose, this relaxed breath for one more deep, full breath in and out. And then when you're ready, you can bring your hands underneath your thighs and close your book. And you can rock over to one side and slowly sit up. Oh, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope your hips feel great. And I'm so proud of you for taking the time to focus on yourself because when you're kind to yourself, that kindness is gonna ripple out into the way that you treat the people that you live with, the people that you love, and the people that you meet every day. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.